Okay, so what we need to do today is we need to introduce the idea of reaction rates and how to write rate expressions uh, as we start chapter 22. So let me um, do that. Um, I do have the advanced organizer here, so we're focusing on reaction rates uh, and how they happen and um, some ways we can describe this. Right, so that's the narrow portion of the overall chapter that we're focusing on today. All right. So when we talk about reaction rates, well, we really mean how fast is the reaction going. All right. So a rate, you probably learned in physical science, mm -hmm. that it's a change in a property over a change in time. Right. So some, something measurable changes. So it might be distance in an hour. Right, that would be a rate. It's a change in time. Right? So a change in distance over a change in time. That's what we're really trying to do. But for chemical reactions, they don't travel. So we can't talk about distance, but we could talk about how moles change with time. Right? Um, so uh, a change in moles over a change in time, or a change in molarity, a concentration change. So there are lots of different things we can measure about reactions. To talk about if the reaction is going quickly or slowly. So it's 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 very analogous to like miles per hour. It's really a similar idea. All right. All right. So a change in distance over a change in time for speed. All right. Um, but for a reaction, we can't measure distance. So what are some things maybe we could measure about a reaction? Temperature. You can actually measure temperature changes. All right. Um, all right. What else could you measure? Think about what may, might change during a reaction. Like uh, That's hard to measure directly, potential energy. What could you measure about the reactants? What if your reactants were a solid? Yeah. So maybe your solid disappears? Mm -hmm. Alright, so you have some certain mass and it goes away over time. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, you could also do things like um, the volume of a gas. Yes. Alright. The gas. If, it's, if the gas is a reactant, it would go away. And you can measure the decrease in the volume. If the gas is a product, you can measure the volume of the gas. Say if you collected it in a yeah. udiometer. Right. Um, because that's proportional to moles. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. You can actually measure things like the color. All right. The absorbance. Mm -hmm. All right. Which is also proportional to the moles of that substance. All right. And you can measure things like pH, how the pH changes, because that's m proportional to moles of acid. Yeah. All right. All right. So those are the easy things that we tend to measure. The disappearance of a solid, like how much mass did I have initially, how much mass do I have after a certain time. The gas volume changes, color changes, mm -hmm. right. uh, and pH. But you also have to remember always, since rates are change in property over change in time, you also have to remember to measure time. And that's something students often forget when they go to, say, design an experiment. They never write down how much time did it take for that mass to disappear, right? Or, you know, five grams of, you know, whatever the solid was formed of maybe a precipitate, how much time did it take? In order for it to be a rate, you have to have that time measurement. All right, let's see if we caught them all. Because <laughs> apparently I had them all in the, in the PowerPoint. All right, so the change in the mass of a solid, a change in concentration. We did miss one, yeah. all right? So you could, uh, how does the molarity change? All right, that's usually the concentration, all right? Molarity, of course, is related to moles. All right. Um, let's see. I think we have the other ones. Temperature changes. Yes. All right. Um, there's a whole field of studies that focuses on that. pH changes, and I think that's 
and gas volume changes. So except for we had missed the molarity one, um, but we had them all. Mm -hmm. right. So those are the different things. You, you, you sort of pick it based on what's easier for that. You look at that particular reaction and go, oh, that one has a solid as a reactant. Yeah. It'd be easy to watch the mass of that solid change. Or that one forms a gas. Okay, I'm going to... You, know, you mm -hmm. pick it accordingly based on what's easy for that reaction. If your entire reaction is colorless, you're probably not going to do color changes. All right? um, and the color changes, you're assuming, that, uh, of course, that that's um, related to a concentration. There's some way to convert that. It's actually possible to quantify that relationship. All right. um, oh, look, there it is, color changes. We had that too. All right. But again, it's all about the moles. Of the, it could be moles of reactant or moles of product. It doesn't really matter. Something that correlates to moles. All right. Um, and we said we have to measure time. That's really important. So we'll repeat that. That's not such a problem. Now, one thing I want you to be able to do is to write rate expressions. If I'm measuring the rate of the reaction, I want to get the same number whether I'm measuring the change in a reactant, the change in a product. <laughs> I should get the same rate, no matter what. Even though, depending on the coefficients, they may not appear the same yeah. moles in the same amount of time. All right, so we're going to do a really generic reaction. So the generic reaction is A moles of A react with B moles of B, all right, to form C moles of C and D moles of D. All right. Now, what's going to happen to the concentration of reactants over time? It's going to go. Yeah, right. All right, the concentration of reactants, which I can represent with a square bracket for molarity, yeah. that goes down as the reaction occurs. Oh, yeah. Now, if you think about it, it's, if it's a change in property over change in time, does it make sense to have a negative rate for a reaction? No. Not really. No. So we want all our rates to come out to be positive numbers. Mm -hmm. And if I do, you know, if, if my reactant concentration is decreasing with time, if I do final minus initial, I get a negative number, but a negative rate doesn't help us. So we're going to make all our rates positive. It's a convention so that physically they all have the same meaning. I'm making stuff, okay? So what you end up doing, when you write these rate expressions, you do one over the coefficient, mm -hmm. all right, change in the moles of that substance over the change in time. But if it's a reactant, we have to put in a negative sign because we want the rate to come out to be a positive value. Right? So for the reactants, you have a negative sign, one over that coefficient, the change in moles over the change in time. But for products, what happens to the concentration of products over time? It goes up. All right? And so it is going to be a positive yeah. number. All right? And so for products, we don't have to worry about that. It is a positive number. Again, you do one over the coefficient change in the moles over the change in time. Because we want to get the same rate overall for the reaction, even though the relative rates at which a re reactant appears in a product forms mm -hmm. might be different. Yeah. The rate of the reaction should be the same. It's kind of a tricky idea, <laughs> but they're actually pretty easy to write. We're going to do an example. Okay, it'll be a little clearer, I think, after the example. Once you know sort of the pattern of how these work, mm -hmm. you, just, that's, you just do that. All right, um, you do need to account for the coefficients. All right, and, th and that's what we're taking into account because um, if you've got the same units, you should get the same value either way, and that's really what we're taking into account. All right. Um, and it shouldn't matter whether you're measuring moles of a solid disappearing or moles of a gas forming. If it's about moles over time, you should get the same number. All right, and so that's what we're trying to equalize that. All right, um, and all reaction rates are positive, and that's why we do the whole negative sign bit. So we're going to do an example. All right, we're going to write a rate expression for this reaction in terms of each reactant and product. All right, so the rate. All right. Let's, we'll start with P4O10. Is it a reactant or a product? Reactant. It's a reactant. So, and what's its coefficient? One. One. So we 
we need a negative sign because it's a reactant. Mm -hmm. One over one. Of course, I guess you really don't need to write that. All right. Change in moles of P4O10 over the change in time. Right. You just do that all the time. Now, the thing is, is for every mole of P4O10 that reacts, mm -hmm. six moles of water react. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to use up water six times faster. But it's the same reaction, so I want to make the overall rate come out the same. Mm -hmm. And so when, when I do this for the water, I need to do negative 1 over 6 change in moles of H2O over the change in time. All right. Now the truth is, if you were really trying to measure the rate of this reaction, you probably wouldn't do it in terms of the water, because the volume of the water is really hard to measure. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't change much. And you could measure it, but it wouldn't change much, so it wouldn't help you. And um, yeah, it's colorless, so there's no really useful things. You'd probably do the either the solid or H3PO4 is an acid, and you measure the pH. But right now, it's more about how do you write these things, all right? So the, those are for the reactants. H3PO4 is a product. product, all right? So it's going to have a positive rate anyway. We don't have to do any correction, all right? <clears throat> But its coefficient now is 4. So we write 1 over 4 change in moles of H3PO4 over the change in time. We want to get the same value no matter what we're doing. But the truth is, you know, H3PO4, I'm going to... In, in the same amount of time, I'm going to have four moles of H3PO4 form for every mole of P4O10 that reacted. But the rate of the reaction is the same, so I'm equalizing the numbers. Is that very difficult? No. Can we do that? Yeah. Yes, we can. We can. All right. Um, now, there are different ways we can measure rates. You pick whatever property is easier, all right? Um, but there's different ways of doing the calculations and we call them different things. So we can talk about an average rate, all right, which is basically a slope calculation. It's the average slope. All right. In this one, if you look at this graph, is this graph showing a reactant or a product? Reactant. A reactant. How did you know it was a reactant? Because it is the slope itself is decreasing. Yeah. All right. The concentration goes down with time, right? Right. I have less and less reactant. I'm using it up. All right. So the average rate is literally just a change in moles of whatever it is. Here it's C4H9Cl. Wow. Okay. All right. But an average rate, I would say, okay, well, let's pick here and let's pick here. All right. So I can do here's my change in the in y or change in moles or molarity. All right. And here's my change in time. All right. And so I would literally just do no, so 0 0.067 minus 0 0.037, something like that. Yeah. All right. Over the change in time, which was um, like 300 seconds, I think, is what I have marked there. I go from 500 to 200. All right. And this is molarity is my y-axis. All right. And so that average slope is my average rate mm -hmm. for that time interval. So it's just a slope calculation. Yeah. But you'll notice it's not, you know, the what's happening to the rate over time? What's happening to the slope of the line? It's not. It bends. Yeah, it's bend. It's getting shallower and shallower. This yeah. reaction is slowing down mm -hmm. as the reaction occurs, which is very typical. That's what you see. Why would you ha why would the reaction slow down with time? Because they're not, the reactant is using up, so there are no more reactants to okay. keep the... Fewer and fewer particles, fewer and fewer collisions. Okay. So we typically see that reaction rate slowing down over time. All right. Uh, and so if I were to actually do this math out, that would be my average rate. Now sometimes, though, you know, depending on what interval you use, that average rate might not reflect what's going on very well mm -hmm. because, as you pointed out, the graph is curving. All right. So a lot of times what we're interested in is an initial rate. All right. And for an initial rate, it's still a slope calculation, but it's for the very early part of the graph where it's really, really linear. For the first oh, 100 seconds or so, 
that's a nice straight line, right? You can see um, this dotted line here is the linear line, all right? And you can see for the first 100 seconds, the data is very much in agreement with that. It's very linear for the first, in this, for this graph, the first 100 seconds. So my average rate for that first 100 seconds, I would call my initial rate. After about 100 seconds, it starts curving, yeah. it starts bending. All right. So an initial rate is still an average rate, but for the early part of the graph, right, where it's linear. All right. Um, and chemists really like initial rates. We do a lot of experiments based on initial rates because it's very reliable. You haven't started to see a lot of slowing down. All right. And so it, you can, it gives a good indication of what, how that reaction was initially behaving. Right. So initial rates tends to be a lot of what uh, people talk about. And the last thing I wanted to, to mention um, is the idea of an instantaneous rate. Have you done tangents in math? Yes. You talked about drawing a tangent line. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can find um, an instantaneous rate at any point. You, you draw a tangent line. There's one actually drawn in here. At any point, you draw that tangent and you find the slope of the tangent. Oh. And that would be the rate at that moment. All right. But if you so an instantaneous rate is uh, can be done as an initial rate. You find the the tangent at the beginning, all right? You can find it at any point. But again, you can see here's here's one tangent line. All right, it's not drawing. All right, here's one tangent line. Here's the second. You can see the slope is is changing over yeah. time, confirming what we already knew. Reaction rates tend to slow down mm -hmm. as the reaction proceeds. All right, as time goes on, as there are fewer particles, they tend to slow down. All right, uh, and so that's what we just said. Let's just summarize it. All right, at the beginning versus the end, rates are getting slower. All right, this is very typical. Reaction rates slow down. We've said that several times, but if you wanted to write it down again, or you hadn't caught it the first time, you know, um, we very often see that with reactions. It's very typical that reactions are getting slower and slower and slower as the reaction goes on. I think we're done. Nice. Okay? Yep. Thank you, Kijang. You're welcome.